Hello, Nikolai Markovich from Echo Lake Technologies, echolaketech.com. In this video, which is actually the second video in a series, I'm going to show you how to send uh, pop-up messages uh, in your app uh, to recipient users. Now, in the first video, and I'll, I'll put the link to it below, but the first video I showed you down here how to send single messages to a recipient. And um, in this one, I'm going to show you how to send multiple messages to a recipient. So let me just do a quick demo before we get to the design. So I've got user one that I'm going to send the message to. And in this right here, uh, this user is jack at test.com. And then we've got user one who's the recipient uh, at test.com. And um, so we got user one, and we have this. Um, this is set up so that this is this column, if you will, is for custom messages, and then this column here is for uh, canned or pre-chosen uh, messages. But let's do the um, the custom message first. So hello, uh, user one like that, and then this row of buttons here is for the multiple messages. Um, to a recipient, uh, so send message, and get this pop-up, and let me just do user one again, and this is message two, Oop, two, like that, and if I go over here, so hello user one, that was the first message, and then message two. So this is how you can set it up so that this recipient can receive more than uh, one message at a time. And let's just do a quick uh, user one again. Uh, do message one, send message. User one, message two, send message. So message one and message two. So let's get into the design on how this works. And basically, let me go um, and where is, I'm gonna hide this, reveal in the element tree. So one thing, if you weren't aware, you can click on an element and then do the reveal in the elements tree and bubble will highlight it. So I just wanna hide that for the moment. And basically what we have on here is user's email. So I put this just to keep track of which user is logged in and then a text field for custom message example. So this is where in this column here, I'm sending custom messages to a recipient and then standard message column here is where I'm sending these uh, standard messages or canned messages, if you will, for uh, to a recipient. I've got a simple pop down or rather a drop down here and it's of type dynamic choices Bubble's default value is static, but we're doing dynamic, and the reason why is because I want to take a look at all the different users that I have in the, the this test database that I've created, and they're of type user, and then I'm just doing a simple search for users. There's no constraint, so that, that way I can see all of the different users, and then I've chosen current options email. That way, in the dropdown, I will see the user's uh, email values. Now, there's other other options on here, there, I think I've got first name and I've got last name, so you could choose other things, but uh, for me, email is the easiest for demo purposes, but for your app, you can, you can choose other options there. Here, I have a simple uh, input uh, value, it's of type text, and I've uh, limited the number of characters to, to 25. Um, you can choose whatever you would like in, in your app, and this is the simple input here. You could do a multi-line input, and for the purposes of this demo, I'm just doing a simple input field. So this is where you can type in whatever you want for a message to the recipient. And in this dropdown here, this is actually, I kept it as static choices, and I just put in three different options here, message one, two, and three. And then that way you can choose whichever you want. Now just moving down, so these are the two uh, uh, buttons that are used for this that I will walk through their workflow right now. And so for the first one, this is where it's a, a custom message that's being uh, sent to the recipient. So what I need to do is to create a new pop-up message. And let me just jump over here to the database for a second. So pop-up message, let me go to data types, pop-up message. 
And basically all I have here is this data type of pop-up message has uh, two fields to it. One is the message field, which is of type text, and the other is a recipient, which is of type user. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is because if um, a recipient is to receive more than one message, then I need to create a data type so that I can go and create a list of messages um, pop-up messages for that user. So I'm going to come over to the user and scroll down here. So I've got pop-up messages. So you see I have pop-up message here. So I've got pop-up messages, which is a list of pop-up messages. And this allows me, again, to go and for any recipient, I can send multiple pop-up messages to that recipient. Now, just to kind of go back here for a second. So pop-up message custom and pop-up message standard. So these were used in the prior video where there's only one message sent to a recipient. And you'll see that it's of type text. And again, the reason, just to compare and contrast a little bit here. So since it's just text and not list of text, I can only send one message to that recipient. So if I have 10 different users in my app and they all want to send a message to one recipient, only one message can get sent to that recipient at a time. For pop-up messages, all 10 of those users can send a, a message to a single recipient. That's what the list of pop-up messages allows me to do. All right, back to the workflow. So the first thing I want to do is I need to create a message a pop-up message, and the message is the input custom messages value. So just to kind of quickly go back here. So input custom message, the value. And then the recipient is the dropdown uh, choose users value. So that's their, their email address, uh, that's the user. Next thing I wanna do is I need to go and change that, that user, the recipient. And so I go, and the thing to change is the drop-down user's value. So again, this is the email. So then Bubble knows that that recipient, I need to make a change to that user profile in the database. So what I'm doing is the pop-up message. I'm going to add the result from step one. So step one, I created the message. And step two, I'm adding that message to the list of pop-up messages. And the reason why I'm using add okay, is because I am adding a single message. And so then this way, when I go to the database, I can see that for that user, I've got a number of different pop-up messages in a list of messages. Next thing I do, I reset the inputs, and then I just show this uh, message alert. Now let me just go over to this next button here for sending messages. So for this, this is for the canned messages. So similarly, same exact thing. I create a pop-up message. It's the same exact as it was over here. Same step. I make change to the user. Again, it's the same drop-down user's value. And then I just go and I add the, the uh, value. The one I should go back here for a second. The one difference between this recipient and this recipient is that let me go over here. I'm, ta I'm taking the, uh, the, I'm sorry, for the message rather. I'm taking the standard message uh, value. So back here, I'm taking the custom message value. So this was, that was the, this custom where you type it in. And over here, I'm taking the drop down standard message value, which is this one here. So I'm just taking whatever value the uh, user chooses and I'm assigning it to message. So they're very similar workflows. I reset the input and then I do a pop-up uh, that the message, um, alert pop-up that the message was sent. So that's all that we do for that. Now, the one thing that I'm also gonna walk through while I'm in the workflows here is these two steps here. So I've color coded these blue. So these are all the ones with the where you have multiple messages going to a recipient. Okay, so the reason why I'm doing these is that when there's a change in the number of uh, messages, I want to make sure that the pop-ups work uh, correctly. So on this one here, what I have is every time um, the current user's pop-up message count is greater than zero, 
okay? I'm gonna open up this pop-up. And basically it's this pop-up here, the multi-sender custom message, all right? And I need to display data in it. And so what I'm gonna display is the current user's pop-up messages first item. Okay, so just to come back over the database, so for the user, so uh, pop-up messages, list of pop-up messages, so I need to send the first item to that pop-up, and then I show the pop-up. And this is how Bubble goes and sends data to a, uh, a pop-up so that it knows what data to present in the pop-up. All right, now this here, this pop-up, since there's multiple, uh, potentially multiple pop-ups, or messages going to a recipient, I should say, I need to handle the case where that, that's true. And basically what I'm doing here is I'm taking a look at when the current user's pop-up message count is greater than one, so I have more than one message in, the, in that list, um, and the pop-up multi-sender custom messages isn't visible. So basically what I'm doing here is, say a, a recipient has five messages Okay, and they read the first message, and then they close the, um, the pop-up. Then what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna see that this pop-up isn't visible, so I'm gonna immediately open up the next pop-up. Okay, and I'm gonna get a, a, do a demo in, in a moment on this when it's disabled workflow, and you can see what happens. If I don't do this, what's gonna happen is that I'm gonna have to refresh, or the user is gonna have to refresh their screen to see the next message, and that's not a good user experience. So I do this step here to kind of autom automatically make that happen for the user. Uh, the other, let's see, I went through the sense of the other one. So we've got this other message here. Now, or not message, this other uh, step right here. So what this is basically doing is that when that pop-up is closed, I need to go and delete the message. And I'm deleting that pop-up, this pop-up pop-up message. So basically the recipient, they get a pop-up, they get a message. When they close that pop-up right here, when that is true, when that happens, when the pop-up is closed, then I wanna go and delete that message. Otherwise, I'm gonna keep getting that message sent to the, to the user. Let me just quickly go over here to show you. So it's when a pop-up is closed. So when that pop-up is closed, this, is, this workflow is going to occur. Okay, let's um, go to, back to the design because I wanna show the pop-up. So here's the pop-up <clears throat> for this. And note that this is a type of content, type of content pop-up message. Okay, so back to the, just kind of quickly back to the workflow uh, right here. So I need to display the data and it's the current user's pop-up message. So that's the type of data. So I need to make sure that this is of the same type pop-up message. And I have a simple text message in here, pop-up group, pop-up messages, message. So it's gonna show what the message is, <coughs> excuse me. And that's all there is for this, this pop-up. Um, the other thing, so I wanna make a note here or a comment on the um, prior video that I, I missed. And it's basically on removing messages. So for the other, the other video I did, I have these other pop-ups here for the standard message and, and the custom message. So one thing to note also is that when the custom message pop-up is closed, I need to go into the database and make sure that that, um, that value for that data field pop-up message custom is, is blanked out. And then similarly here, when the standard pop-up closes, I need to go and remove the data from that, that data field as well. So it effectively resets it. Now, the reason why I need to do that is because if I have, in, in this scenario here where it's just one message, um, I need to go and have um, a prevent away from multiple users sending a message to the, the same recipient. And I actually put in a conditional in here so that when the, the dropdown, when the user is chosen here and um, that field 
the message field is not empty for either the custom or for the, uh, the standard uh, pop-up uh, or standard message, I, I want to make sure um, that there's not additional messages sent to that user. And I, what I do is I just go and I say, please wait, message pending, and then I prevent this button from being clicked. I don't need to do it for this button or this button here because per the design, I can have multiple messages in queue in that list for that recipient. But for these, these are just single message. Um, this is only set up for the recipient to receive single messages, so I need to put this conditional in here. And similarly, when the standard message is not empty, or the message count from sending multiple standard messages is greater than, than zero, um, then I need to go in, put a note in there, and tell the user, hold off, can't send any messages for the moment. And I'll, I'll demo that um, in a moment. Okay, so this is good. So let's uh, go and do this. So user one and uh, message one, like that, and then send it. And if I choose user one again, so you can see that that conditional is working. So if I click on it, I, I can't send anything. Okay, so I'm going to pick message one, actually message three, and send. And then message three, test, and send message like that. Now, if I come over here, so message one, message three, and message three test, like that. Now, I'm going to go back to the workflow for a second because you remember how I said that if I, um, if I don't put this step in here, where it basically goes and it, it checks to see if I have more than, uh, more than one message in there and that the uh, pop-up hasn't been uh, closed. So I can go and disable this workflow. And need to refresh and refresh. This is user one, the recipient, and here's Jack, the sender. So user one and test one, send it, user one, test two, send message. Okay, so now I come over here, get test one, I close it, and the second pop up didn't appear. Now I have to refresh the screen and then test two shows up. All right, so this is the reason why this workflow needs to be uh, in place here, so that the user doesn't have to go and do a reset or a yeah, screen refresh. And that's basically the, uh, the design for this. Um, I hope you liked the video. I hope it made sense. If you have any questions, certainly leave a message below and I'll get back to you. If you like this video, uh, I do appreciate your thumbs up. And um, if you do subscribe to the channel, I do have future videos coming uh, out on how to create uh, other designs in, in Bubble. So stay tuned for those.